Hi friends, it's Seamus and Shauna again. Hey Shauna, guess what I got? I went to the costume store and bought me a real king's clown and scepter. Oh Seamus, you look so important. But what's a scepter? Well, I don't really know Shauna, but don't you think it makes me look real special? Oh, wow, Seamus. You look like the most important man in the whole world. Oh, Shauna. I'm not the most important man in the world. Jesus is the greatest king of the world. Oh, that's what our lesson is about today. But first, I want to say hi to a few friends of just five more questions, please. Hiya, Sandra. Hiya, Freddy. Welcome to just five more questions, please. If someone listening wants me to give them a shout out, maybe you have a birthday or an anniversary or some other special occasion coming up, just write it in the comments below here at the YouTube and I try to give you a shout out. Today, our lesson is called God's Timetable Part 7, Lord of All. Lord of All? Lord of All. Here's Harold and Therese Greenberg to tell us all about it. Mama set the table with dishes made of clay food she cooked is warming on the stove Daddy chopped the wood we need to keep the fire strong With toil and sweat he keeps his family warm And as us children gathered round the table to dig in Daddy cleared his voice and said then let's begin let us pray on this day of our dear Savior's birth. Our Father sent His only Son to live and die right here on earth. Let's send our praises up to heaven for our Lord to hear. We never knew that someone's love could be so. Thank you, Seamus. Thank you, Seamus. Today, we will look at God's timetable part seven, entitled Lord of All. Amen. But first, Seamus, tell the folks how Just Five Questions Please works. Okay, folks, here's how Just Five More Questions works. When it's time, number one, somebody reads the scripture or question on the screen. Number two, explains it in their own words. Number three, asks the others in the room to add any more thoughts of their own. We learned that there were prophecies about a coming king that would defeat Israel's enemies and rule the world. Mm -hmm. And that the birth of this king would be announced by a great star in the night. And we saw that just as that star was a light in the darkness that led men to Jesus, so to Jesus himself is the light. Amen in the dark, leading men to himself. Praise God. Let's read in scripture this glorious promise God makes to Israel. Amen. In Isaiah 60, Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is dawning upon you. Look, darkness covers the earth, 
and deep darkness covers the peoples. But the Lord will dawn upon you. Amen. Remind you of a certain star? Yes. And his glory will be seen over you. Ooh. Over Israel. Nations will walk to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Praise God. Jesus himself is that star in the prophecy. Our star shall rise up. That's Jesus. That big glowing thing in the night sky was only a representation of him. Mm -hmm. Also, according to the book of Revelation, we too are stars, which you would have learned in the last lesson, <laughs> held in the right hand of Jesus, mm -hmm. and we have his same mission. Mm -hmm. And even in future prophecy, which we won't do all now, mm -hmm. but Jesus will be reigning from, yes. from Jerusalem. Yes. Amen. And all nations will, will come, come to, to him. him. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We also learned that the Magi were most likely from the very nations That's right. threatened by those ancient prophecies. And so they should have been. <laughs> Not only that, but they were also practitioners mm -hmm. of evil religious practices, yes. which were condemned by God right. and still are condemned right. by God. Amen. Amen. Don't get involved in anything like exactly. that. Exactly. Imagine how the Magi must have felt as they waited for this fearsome conquering king to be born. Let's look at this prophecy again. Notice that it mentions a star and a scepter. A scepter. A scepter. <laughs> it also condemns the nations of Moab and Edom. Which we will see later the importance of that. Amen. Numbers chapter 24 verses 8 and 9. Now this is Balaam prophesying. Remember Balaam? We, we learned a, a couple of lessons ago about Balaam. We're coming back to it now to continue along that line. The God who brought them out of Egypt has the strength of a wild bull. He will devour nations that are his enemies, crush their bones, and pierce them with arrows. Those who bless you will be blessed. Those who curse you will be cursed. I see someone who is not here now. Who do you think he sees? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I look at someone who is not nearby. A star will come from Jacob. A scepter. Here we have that new word again. A scepter mm -hmm. will rise from Israel. He will crush the heads of the Moabites. Edom will be conquered. So, Israel will become wealthy. He will rule from Jacob and destroy whoever is left in their cities. Who will live when God decides to do this? Mm. So you read that and you're from one of those cities. Yes. That's pretty okay. scary. Who will live <laughs> when God decides to do this? Yes. So it's fearful. As this prophecy about a coming king is, it is only fearful to the foolish, Amen. to the wise. Amen. It's hope. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The prophetic star announced his birth, but the scepter mm. in the prophecy speaks of his power yes. and authority. Ah, the scepter. Just as Jesus is the star of the prophecy, uh -huh. he because it does. He says, "I will, I will raise uh, out of Judah a star, yes, and a scepter, and a scepter." And Jesus is both wow. the star and, and the, the scepter. scepter. Just as he is the star of the prophecy, mm -hmm. he is also the scepter of God. Amen. And he only. That can be represented by a physical scepter, mm -hmm. but Jesus is the scepter. Wow. It is, is by, through a scepter that a king rules. Amen. And it is through Jesus that the Father rules. Amen. It is Jesus 
who controls and and gives righteous judgment to the world. Yeah, amen. We're going to learn more about that. A scepter is a stick held by a king or a person in a place of authority. Its meaning was described way back during the coronation of William the Conqueror. It was decreed, and I quote, mm -hmm. by the scepter, uprisings in the, in the kingdom are controlled, and the rod gathers and confines those men who stray. In other words, if, you're, if you get, uh, if you stray, the scepter line. gets pointed at you, <laughs> And then it gets pointed toward jail, and then you get confined. <laughs> yes. That's <laughs> good. Okay. A scepter is a symbol of great power. Mm -hmm. It has been so embraced by people in authority, mm -hmm. it has even be been a fashion statement ah, for a while. I see. As a stick mm -hmm. held in a ruler's hand, mm -hmm. the scepter, although it's just a stick, mm -hmm has taken many forms through the years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was believed that the ancient false gods carried them. Okay. There you see pictures of, uh, of the false gods yeah. who are carrying the scepters, and they're pretty big scepters. <laughs> yes. The Romans, Egyptians, and other leaders of ancient civilizations also use them as a symbol of authority. Amen. And we see here Roman, Egyptians, Greeks, mm -hmm. all using scepters to symbolize their authority. Amen. The Scottish, British, and German military used the variation of this ancient authority rod. It came to be known as a swagger stick. Swagger stick. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's how they carried it under this their arm. This is really a drumstick, but yeah, it's I grabbed a drumstick. it quickly. <laughs> Maybe because when men think they have power, as they did when they held this stick, they tend to swagger. Oh, no, I something. Yes. <laughs> I am something. I got my <laughs> swagger stick. Here's, uh, there's a Scottish ruler. There's some British rulers uh, and, and some German military. Amen. Everybody loves the swagger stick. Yeah. <laughs> Even the U.S. military, right. as far back as George Washington himself, wow. sported swagger sticks. Amazing. There's George. There's someone passing the swagger stick on to the next yes, in line. Yes, that's right. <laughs> swagger sticks became so popular, they even moved from military applications to the culture at large. They became a man's fashion statement. <laughs> Oh, how very dapper a man looks with a swagger stick under his arm. Or so they thought. This and is, here we you get see. all dressed up with yeah. your top hat and your swagger stick under your arm. And that's what I was, <laughs> I was trying to look dapper, I suppose. <laughs> just trying to look dapper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Even today, the symbol of British royalty mm. is represented by a scepter. Mm-hmm and an orb. Oh, now that's interesting. The scepter represents authority mm -hmm. and the orb represents the world. Wow. In other words, the monarch has authority over the world. Wow, that's heavy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And here's a, a, the, uh, the uh, coronation of um, the queen. Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Yes. yes, and you see that she has the scepter in her right hand mm -hmm. and the orb in her left hand. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. Throughout history, it has been a fearful thing to walk into a king's court and risk displease, uh, displeasing him. This is why Esther, from Scripture, told her uncle Mordecai that she was afraid to go before the king and plead for his mercy on her people, the Jews. Okay. Now? We need a last person to drink some coffee. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. 
ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, now we need the last person to drink some hot tea. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, Pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, we're back. Yeah. You had a good discussion with your family. Mm -hmm. And so here's Esther. And she says, all the world knows that any, anyone, whether man or woman, who goes into the king's inner court without his summons, mm is doomed to die uh -huh. unless the court hold the king holds out his gold scepter mm -hmm. and the king is not called for me to come to him in more than a month wow and then she says i will go to the king that's brave even if it is against a royal decree and if i die then I die. Wow. So our question was, how did Esther's concern for her people impact her fear for her own life? Well, it seems obvious that her, her concern for her people outweighed her concern for her own life. Wow. Praise God. Amen. That reminds me of Jesus. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's Christ-like love, willing to lay down her life yeah. for the people that yeah. she loved. Amen. And, but she does go before him. Yes. Amen. And God gives her favor. Praise the Lord. And the king does hold out his scepter to her. Yes. Uh -huh. I know. Could have gone either way. Yep. Could have gone either way. <laughs> but praise God. And there it is. And one, when one goes into a king's court, the king is seen seated with a scepter in his hand. Wise visitors to a great king's court would always bow and pay great amounts of tribute in the form of money or goods, as if to say, I submit mm -hmm. to your authority. You are greater yes. than I. And basically, they're paying the greater king not to kill them right then and there yes. and to show mercy on the nations that they represent. Yes. So prophecy tells us that Jesus is Lord of all. Amen. Not only is he the only one worthy of a scepter well, in his hand. Yes. He himself is the scepter of God. That's good. <laughs> Seated at the right hand of the Father, and that's, again, that's the hand that does yes, things. Yes, Seated at the right hand of the Father, he is God's scepter. Mm -hmm. And the Father executes judgment by him. The Father doesn't directly judge anyone. Mm -hmm. The Father executes judgment with his scepter, Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Prophecy warns that the Father will crush all the enemies of Jesus and bring them to his feet. You know, I'm reminded again how wonderful uh, uh, a savior and a king Jesus is. He's the scepter, the right hand of God reminds me that he is that lion of Judah. Yes. And yet he's also the lamb, the lamb. of God. Yes. He's he is the lion all, is the lamb he is all things mm -hmm. to us yes praise god yeah and we know sometimes we know people who are more like scepters and oh, wow. they're very judgmental yeah that's right and then we know people that are more like lambs and they they're very sweet mm -hmm. 
But Jesus is a combination of both. The best strength. Of, the best of strength and goodness. And love and goodness. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. So, Psalms 110. This is the declaration of the Lord to my Lord. Amen. Again, we see hints of the Trinity there. Yes, yes. The Lord to my Lord. Sit thou on my right hand. So that's Jesus. Mm -hmm. He yes. sits at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. Sit thou on my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Wow. The Lord will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. So Jesus will mm -hmm. be in Zion mm -hmm. and his power will go out from there. Yes. Will extend your mighty scepter from Zion. Rule over your surrounding enemies. Praise the Lord. Praise and so God. this is the king that's about to be born. This yes. is this is who the star is announcing. Wow. This guy's going to have this. No wonder these kings mm -hmm. and and magi want yes. to come and make it right with him. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And there he is, scepter in hand and an orb like Queen Elizabeth. The King of Kings. The 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 Lord of all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the days of those kings, it says, Daniel 2.44, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. It will crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, but will itself endure forever. Forever. And so we see here a prophecy of, uh, uh, of Daniel about this kingdom that will destroy all other kingdoms and itself go on mm -hmm. forever. Amen. Which is why Jesus instruct us, instructs us to pray, Thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done. Amen. Because this is the final kingdom. All of the kingdoms are false. Yes. They're men trying to set up kingdoms of their own. That's right. And they're false kingdoms because the only scepter is the hand of God, Amen. Uh, is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and he has already been promised that all other kings and all other nations, yes. will, he will rule over them. Praise God. This is what the Lord thinks of all the ungodly rulers and scepter-wielding kings of the world. Isaiah 14.5 says this, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. The best thing for any ruler of any kingdom to do right now, mm -hmm. right now, if you're a ruler of a kingdom and you're listening to this, uh -huh. or if you're just the boss of a company, right. or you think you're hot stuff and you're a, you're a, a, a big fish in a small bowl, mm -hmm. The best thing for any ruler to do right now yes. is worship the one and only true king of the whole universe. Wow. The best thing for any ruler to do is to worship the only person worthy of rulership. Amen. Worship the king of the universe, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself this question. What are any of us really in comparison to who he Amen. is? Thank you, Jesus. Do we really want to challenge his authority? Not me. <laughs> Do we think it a laugh to make fun of Christians or the Bible mm -hmm. or Jesus Christ? Do we really want to challenge his authority or do we want to bow and worship Amen. the only true Lord of all? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, now we need the last person to drink some iced tea. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, Pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, now we need the last person who drank some soda pop. Read the scripture 
or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, okay we're back. Yes. All right. Uh, you folks read this scripture, Psalm 68, 32 through 35. Kings on earth sing to God. Mm -hmm. Sing songs of praise to our Lord. Mm -hmm. Sing to him who rides his chariot through the ancient skies. Listen to his powerful voice. Tell everyone how powerful he is. His power fills the skies. God, you are awesome in your temple. Amen. Amen. So what should all kings of the world be doing and why? They should be bowing down to <laughs> Jesus yes. if they know what's good for them. Yes, <laughs> and sing to God. Yes. Sing songs of praise. <laughs> we should all be singing songs of praise to God. Amen. Sing to him because he fills the skies. He is Lord. <laughs> he <laughs> is Lord. Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the world should look. Amen. Prophecy also tells us that the kings of the earth would pay tribute to the coming king, the king of the kings, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. The Magi's gifts, remember the Magi's gifts, were just the beginning of the fulfillment of these prophecies. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 60, Verses 5 and 6, it says, The wealth of the nations will come to you. Many camels will cover your land, young camels from Midian and Ephah. Everyone from Sheba will come. They will bring gold and incense. They will sing the praises of the Lord. So it's widely believed that the Magi were from the same areas of the world which were once a part of the Assyrian ah. and then Babylonian. That's right. And then Medo-Persian Empire. Oh, right, yeah. Which we saw in an earlier lesson. Right. Remember, it was the Assyrians who first took the nation of Israel into captivity. That's right. This would make the Magi particularly concerned mm -hmm. about this coming king. Yes. You see, he was very, God was very angry with Assyria. Wow. In particular. Amen. And we'll read this in the prophecy. Micah says, they, meaning Assyria, shall smite the ruler of Israel with a rod or a scepter on the cheek. Uh-huh. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, you are little to be among the clans of Judah. Yet, out of you shall one come forth for me, who is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from ancient days, eternity. Wow. Now that's old. That's old. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so out, out of Bethlehem is going to be a person, a man born who has come from eternity. Wow. Therefore, shall he give them up until the time. So therefore, shall he give them up? God is going to allow these bad things to happen to Israel, mm -hmm. the Assyrians to mm -hmm. have their way until the time that she who travails has brought forth. Ooh. Who are we talking about? Mary. Mary. Mary's going to travail and, and bring, bring forth, forth a promised son. Mm -hmm. And this one shall be our peace. Mm -hmm. Thus shall he, the Messiah, Praise the Lord. deliver us from who? The, the Assyrian. Assyrian. This, this, wow. is, this, is, this is serious. And the Magi are... Scared. Imagine you're going, we had better wait for, watch for the star. That's right. When he comes, 
to our land and when he treads on our borders. Now these verses are saying that Assyria did hurt Israel, but it was like the Assyrian king only hit Israel on the cheek with his scepter stick. It reminds us of God's promise regarding Satan, that though like a snake, Satan might bite the Messiah's heel, Messiah will crush Satan's head. God waits for the right time to punish evil, but he never forgets or neglects it. That's right. Amen. Okay. Now we need the last person to drink some water. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay. Now we need the last person who drank some soda pop. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, Pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, so you were discussing Genesis 3, mm. where he makes this promise. He says, I will make you mm -hmm. and the woman. So he's talking directly to the serpent. Right. I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. That's right. Your children and her children will be enemies. That's right. You will bite her child's foot. Oh, Who's there. Her there. child? Jesus. That's right. Eventually, mm -hmm. Eve's child, great, 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 great grandson mm -hmm. will be Jesus. That's right. And at the cross, Satan will bite. In, in, in a sense, in a sense, bite his foot. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, just like the Assyrian king only smote yes. Israel on the cheek. Mm -hmm. All Satan's going to get is a little bite. Yes. But at the same time, that that same cross, mm -hmm. Jesus will crush Satan's head. Amen. And Satan will be destroyed wow. by the cross. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So when and how did Jesus bite? Satan. Satan bite Jesus' heel, mm -hmm. and when and how did Jesus crush Satan's head? At the cross, at the cross. Yes. <laughs> where I first saw the light. Exactly. At the cross. So, her child will be called Jesus, and you will damage him a little. Ah. But he will, in his time, destroy you altogether at the cross. Amen. Because time has passed. We may think God has let evil men go unpunished, mm -mm. but he doesn't. That's right. He will always bring justice. He will wait, mm -hmm. but in the end, he always brings justice. That's right. Speaking to a group of particularly arrogant Jewish leaders. Yes. Jesus quoted this verse from the Psalms. He said, I said you are gods, sons of the Most High. All of you, nevertheless, like men, you will die and fall like any prince. Wow. Jesus quoted this verse to men in high authority, which is another use for the word gods in scripture with a small g. They were so sure that they were as God. We might also remember that God originally did create Adam in his image. But now, what has happened? They are not gods. They will die 
with their swagger sticks and scepters in hand, like every so-called important man before them. And here we see this statue depicting a dying soldier with his swagger stick in his hand, but death comes to all of us, whether we have a swagger stick or not. Whether we wore a crown. Yes. Whether we had a title. Yes. Whether we were the boss or the cleanup man. Yes. Whatever we thought we were that made us so important, we'll all die like men. That's right. That's right. The Jews were made to pay either tribute or taxes mm -hmm. to each and every one of the many nations ah. that have conquered them yes. down through history. Yes. But a new day was coming where instead of the wealth of Israel flowing out to their conquerors, which mm -hmm. has always happened, right. Israel has been paying their conquerors mm -hmm. one way or another, the day will come when tribute will be flowing from those nations yes. to this coming king. Amen. Kings will bring gifts and tribute to the Messiah in hopes of gaining his favor. Praise God. And here is the verse in Isaiah. They, meaning Israel, will take as captives those whose captives they were. Uh -huh. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Uh, things have turned around. Yes. And this, these are the kind of verses that the Magi are, are learning. Yes. And, and, and wary of. They're saying, wait, what? <laughs> it will happen in the day that the Lord will give you rest from your sorrow. Praise God. From your trouble and from the hard service in which you were made to serve. And of course, starting way back when the, when the Jews were in Egypt. Yes. They've had to serve one nation after another. Mm -hmm. That you will take up this parable, this is what you're going to say, mm -hmm. against the king of Babylon. And the king of Babylon, was, was a, that was a very hard captivity. Yes. And to the king of Babylon, they're going to say, how the oppressor has ceased. How the attacker has ceased. The Lord has broken the staff or scepter ah. of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Crack. <laughs> Praise God. Give me your scepter, Babylonian uh -huh. king. Uh -huh. Crack. That's right. Okay. Now we need the last person who drank. A vanilla milkshake. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay. Now we need the last person who drank a chocolate milkshake. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. You had the scripture from Matthew 29, verse 27, that says this, And they twisted a thorny crown for him, and put it on his head, and placed a reed in his right hand. Then they knelt before him in mockery, crying, Hail, King of the Jews! Down through the ages, the Lordship of Jesus 
has been nothing but a joke. Question four asked, why do you think Jesus let people treat him this way? Well, Jesus loves us and he allowed himself uh, to become nothing so that through his death, uh, we might be redeemed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But that mockery, though meant for evil, mm -hmm. you know, it seems like everything the devil tries to do turns around and serves the Lord. That's right. That's, <laughs> That's right. That's right. That mockery. Must confound the devil. Yes. <laughs> though meant for evil, represented a profound truth. Amen. The thorny crown mm -hmm. was essentially his true crown. Yeah. Not the golden crown. Mm -hmm. The thorny crown he allowed them to put on his head. Mm -hmm. Because this is where he's a greater king than any other king. Uh, what other king wears a thorny crown yes. for his people? Yes. The thorny crown was his true crown. Amen. That feeble reed he held in his hand, yes. that's supposed to be a scepter. Yeah. But that was his true scepter. Wow. Because as they mocked him, he was the greater king that's right. than any king. Yeah. And when they said, Hail him who is king of the Jews, they meant it to be mockery. But mm -hmm. that was true. Mm -hmm. This is the man willing. Yeah. Willing to pay the true price, any price, mm -hmm. to save his people. The ultimate sacrifice proved by the resurrection of the dead. Yes. So, for a mere golden crown, a mere golden crown would have been as hollow and worthless as the crowns that all the other rulers wore. Yeah, that's right. What if he just got a golden crown? Well, everybody has a golden crown. Yeah. But this crown of thorns, mm -hmm. that spoke of his true mm -hmm. nobility. Mm -hmm. And some diamond-crusted rod scepter in his hand mm -hmm. would be as harsh and unfeeling as the scepters carried by every other ruler wow. in the world. Wow. Praise God. Praise so God. So he allowed himself to be mocked because he was not that kind of ruler. Amen. He was a different kind of ruler. Praise the Lord. That cruel crown was the crown of a true king yes. willing to bear it along with all its shame and suffering even unto death. All for the sake of the people he governed and for their sake alone. Not for his own ends. No, not at all. Because his ends were to save. Yes. It was that crown, that crown of thorns, and that wimpy reed in his right hand that proved him worthy later of a symbolic golden crown and sturdy staff. Isaiah chapter 49 verse 7 tells us this, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One, to him whom man despiseth, to him whom the nation abhorreth, to a servant of rulers, kings shall, rise, shall see and rise, princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. I think this is a prophecy that Israel has missed mm. and most of the people even in his day mm -hmm. they missed this prophecy okay redeemer's coming yes they thought he was just going to be a ruling king and deliver them from the yes land. but so much more uh-huh but it but this says that man will despise him mm -hmm. nations will abhor him wow and that had to happen yes and when he was despised and abhorred they didn't see it as a fulfillment of prophecy. Yes, they missed it. They thought, it. oh, he's just going to be this great, uh, uh, strong king. Yes. No, he's going to be despised and important. That's what happened mm -hmm. when they bowed down, put the thorn of, of 
a crown of, crown thorns. of thorns on his head and, yes. said, uh, and mocked him. Yes. He was being despised and abhorred then. Mm -hmm. He was a servant of rulers. Yes. He, he, and yet, kings will arise and mm -hmm. princes also yes. will worship. The final outcome. Yes. Amen. This is, but first the abhorring yes. and despising have mm -hmm. happened and then the kings will arise and all worship and go to this one. Amen. Amen. Jesus would be a king like the world has never known. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Never known such a king. Thank you, a Jesus. A king which the world is actually incapable of producing. Amen. Why is the world incapable of producing a king like this? Because all rulers, human rulers, mm -hmm. are at heart selfish, mm -hmm. carnal, mm -hmm. power lovers. Wow. Ouch. <laughs> they have been given a little bit of authority. Mm -hmm which they always abuse. Oh, hey you, do that. Hey you, <laughs> yes. do this. Yes, yes. Only Jesus is a truly good man and a wise and just and righteous ruler. Yeah, I'm rem uh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm reminded of how, how different Jesus was with his disciples. He had uh, 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 he had them take off their sandals so that he mm -hmm. could wash yes. their feet. Yes. And they, they couldn't see it. They said, no, no. No, we no, shouldn't I do should it. be washing your feet. Yeah, they, they, they just thought it was reversed, which it was. Yes. But he wanted to show them that he, although was a king, he became a servant mm -hmm. to all. Mm -hmm. And he'd be a king mm -hmm. later on. Mm -hmm. Amen. He is a ruler. Mm -hmm. who brings peace. Yes. How many rulers bring peace? Yeah. Down through history, mm -hmm. rulers bring wars. Yeah. Jesus brings peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And Isaiah 9, 6 tells us this. For a child hath been born to us. A son hath been given to us. Thank you, Lord. Whose son was he? He's the father's son, mm -hmm. but he is given to us. Amen. And the princely power is on his shoulder. Yes. And he doth call his name Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. Here we have some more Trinity. Yes. Here. Father of Eternity and Prince of Peace. Thank you, Lord. Jesus would be a different kind of king yes. with a different kind of scepter. His would be a shepherd's loving staff. Praise God. I mean, if you got to hold a stick, yeah. hold a shepherd's staff. Yes, thy rod and thy staff, yes. they comfort me. Yes. Psalm 45, verse 6 tells us this, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever a scepter of uprightness, is the scepter of your kingdom. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, no, no, they don't beat me up, they don't control yes. me. Yes. They don't, gra no, thy rod and mm -hmm. thy staff, my good shepherd, they comfort me. Amen. And in John chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Praise God. And so when he says, I am the good shepherd, he's actually saying that he's the fulfillment of this prophecy mm -hmm. in, in um, Jeremiah. I, the Lord, promise that a new time will certainly come when I raise up for them a righteous branch, a descendant of David, which Jesus was. Amen. And he will rule over them with wisdom and understanding and do what is right in the land. Amen. In Micah chapter 5, verse 4, we read this. He 
will assume his post and shepherd the people by the Lord's strength, by the sovereign authority of the Lord his God. They will live securely, for at that time he will be honored even in the distant regions of the earth. Here we see that prophecy again. Yeah. And Jesus is, has told us, mm -hmm. you know that shepherd that's supposed to come and shepherd his people and uh -huh. then be honored by the distant regions of the earth? Yes. That's me. That's me. I am Praise God. the good shepherd. Praise God. Praise the Lord. These magi were from countries that were enemies of God's people. Back to the magi again, huh? Mm -hmm. But they understood enough about prophetic scripture to know that this coming king from Judah wasn't someone to fight with. That's, that's because that's, they were educated by Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yes. This group of magi seemed determined to find out all they could about where and when this Messiah was to be born. Amen. Amen. They studied scripture probably more carefully than the current Jewish leadership, they diligently watched the sky for that star. They had packed up great treasures ready to give as tribute to this new king. They had prepared to make a long journey just to worship this great one. They decided to seek him with all their hearts, worship him, and surrender everything to him. In Proverbs 2, 2 through 5, we read, Apply your heart to understanding, seeking it conscientiously and striving for it eagerly. Yes, if you cry out for insight and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek skillful and godly wisdom as you would silver and search for her as you would hidden treasures, then you will understand the reverent fear of the Lord, that is, worshiping Him and regarding Him as truly awesome, and discover the knowledge of God. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. They diligently sought through the scriptures mm -hmm. uh, and prophecy mm -hmm. when and where this, this Savior would be born. Mm -hmm. And although it was fearful, they in their wisdom had reverence and yes. decided to bow to this coming king. You know, and that's a lesson and a warning to anyone who's listening to this message and may not have made a decision for Christ. These magi went to Jesus, made a decision to come to him mm -hmm. before he came to yes. them. Yes. And it would be wise and diligent for you to bow your knee and surrender your heart yes. to Jesus now yeah. while there's time. If he holds the scepter of judgment, yeah. don't wait for that. Yes. Bow down and say, I give you all, Lord. Yes, yes. In searching so diligently for this promised one, yes. they found great fulfillment and joy yes. in their journey. Amen. Ironically, if those who fear the Lord for his great awesomeness, who find great joy mm -hmm. and seek to be closer and closer to him. Amen. Amen. While those who defy the Lord and fail to fear or seek him, yes, those who would rather scoff him mm -hmm. find only sorrow. That's so true. That's so true. Knowledge begins with the fear and respect for the Lord. You, you say, should I be afraid of the Lord? Mm -hmm. You bet. Yeah. He is the Lord yes. of all. Yes. And if at that starting point, yes. you can learn to fear and respect Him, mm -hmm. then you are wise and you can learn, you can begin to have a walk and a relationship with Amen. Him. Amen. Amen. But stubborn fools yes. hate wisdom and refuse to learn. Amen. Amen. Proverbs 1, 29 and 30 says this, because they hated knowledge 
and did not choose the fear of the Lord, that is, obeying him with reverence and awe-filled respect, they would not accept my counsel, and they spurned all my rebuke. This group of wise men had studied scripture, watched the sky, and sought diligently for truth. They applied themselves to seek the Lord's anointed, no matter what the cost. They determined to bow before him and worship him and surrender to him everything, body, soul, and mind. And that's what God asks us to do. That's what God may be asking you to do right now. Be that wise man. Follow Jesus. Follow that star. Yes. They were determined to bow before him and this pursuit of wisdom for them and for you, if you follow that same pursuit, will bring great joy. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now we need the last person who drank some lemonade. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, now we need the last person who drank some milk. Read the scripture or the question on the screen. Explain it in your own words. Ask if anyone else in the room can add any more thoughts of their own. So, when this slide comes up, pause the video. Here is the slide. Okay, we're back. We have a couple verses here. Okay. Matthew says, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. Praise God. And Isaiah says, Let all the people of Jerusalem shout! His <laughs> praise with joy. Amen. For great and mighty is the Holy One of Israel who lives among you. Amen. Speaking of His incarnation. Yes. Speaking of Him becoming flesh. The Holy God One. in flesh who lives among you. When you think of this, do you shout uh -huh. with praise and joy? Amen. I think sometimes we're a little just too reverent yeah <laughs> they the, the isaiah says shout mm -hmm. with praise and joy Amen. and when they uh magi saw the star it says they rejoiced with exceeding great thank you joy. jesus where's our joy yes where's amen shout amen hallelujah so what do you think their rejoicing looked like did you reenact it <laughs> family did you, did you go about shouting? We found the Lord. We found Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Lord. <laughs> All right. Praise God. So, they loaded up their caravan with riches and gifts to offer to this great one, and they headed on out to pay him due homage. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And this would be just the beginning of the world bringing gifts and paying homage to the King of Kings and Lord of all. By the end of God's plan, all kings, yes. all kings yes. will bow before Jesus. Three types of gifts are mentioned here. Okay. They were worth fortunes. They also represent three major things about Jesus' nature and his mission. Cool. Okay, the gold. The gold. Gold reminds us that Jesus is a king. Amen. Frankincense. 
Frankincense was used by the high priest mm. in the tabernacle mm -hmm. for prayers ah. for the people, Ooh. for intercession in the holy place. This reminds us that Jesus, our high priest, Amen. who lives continually to make intercession for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And finally, myrrh. Mm -hmm. Myrrh was used as an embalming fluid for the dead. Oh, I see. And it reminds us that Jesus died for our sins. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. And how might we offer these same gifts to our Savior and King? Well, we might give him our worldly goods, our gold. Mm -hmm. We might become high priests and spend time in fervent intercession, burning frankincense for the lost. And for myrrh, we could offer our own lives as living sacrifices, giving our lives to the preaching of the gospel. Praise the Lord. We call him Savior. Yes. We call him advisor. Yes. Not a problem. Okay. Get a little advice from the Bible. Okay. We call him friend. Oh, yes. Oh, I like think of him as friend. Yes. We call him a physician when we're sick. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. We call him our co pilot. Oh, yeah, that's true. Although he shouldn't be our co pilot, he should be yeah, he's the a, main pilot. He's in charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we call him co pilot. We call him counselor. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We come to him. We love him as our comforter, uh, our provider, yes, our strengthener, uh -huh. our way maker. Wow. But will we acknowledge him as Lord and King wow. and ruler over our lives? That's who he really is. Yes. He's all of those other things. Yes. But first and last. First and foremost. Yes. He is the King of Kings. He is not there for our convenience. Mm -hmm. We are his servants. Yes. We are his subjects, yes. first and foremost. Yes. And his children mm -hmm. and the beloved ones that he governs. Yes. And he takes good he, he's the shepherd and we are his sheep. Mm -hmm. But he's the shepherd. Yes. He is the one in charge. Mm -hmm. Are we compelled to bow to worship? Mhm. Mm to serve his ends yes. instead of asking him to serve our ends. Yes. To serve his ends. Mm -hmm. To promote his name. That's right. To obey him. Yes. Praise God. Too often, this is how we see Jesus. Uh, we want how we want Jesus in our lives. What is non-judgment? Love is openness, acceptance, kindness. compassion, all the nice parts. All good. <laughs> yes. Not enough. Do we respond to him fully for who he really is? He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the King of the universe. He's the Lord of all, the Lord of you, and the Lord of me. When he says, who will go for me, do we quickly say, send me Lord? Nations often have rebellions mm -hmm. against their monarchs right. throughout history. That's true. We hate the idea, mankind hates the idea, of having any king over us. Yeah, that's the way we are. Sometimes we ask for a king, mm -hmm. but then we hate him after oh, we yeah. ask king. We, we, and this is because we cherish our personal freedoms. Right. Don't let anybody mess with my mm -hmm. personal freedoms. Don't tread on me. We don't like to be told what to do. Yeah. Sadly, this attitude even affects our relationship with the king of the universe. Our personal freedoms, in fact, sometimes are more important to us than our relationship with God. True. Especially if it means we must give up one of those precious freedoms for a higher cause. Mm -hmm. Yes, to humans, there is no issue more important than our right to do what we want to do. Yeah. <laughs> so, although it's true, no human should dominate other humans. Yeah. 
Jesus is different. Mm. Jesus is God eternal. Yes. He is the only one worthy to be called Lord. Yes. King of the universe. Yes. Lord of all. Yes. Nevertheless, in our rebellion, mm. our rebellious spirit, mm -hmm. we try to rewrite the commands of God. Like, wow. I know God said, do this. And what I think he really means... Oh boy, that's you're going to get in trouble there. <laughs> we pick and choose yeah. which commands we want to obey. Mm -hmm. we, we suit it all to our own preferences. Mm -hmm. Or we'll just ignore uh -huh. what the Lord wants from us. You're going to get in trouble. calls us to. We're unwilling to submit ourselves to any monarch. Mm. Even if that king's name is Jesus. How foolish... How foolish. So Jesus asks us right now, as he asked his disciples, mm -hmm. and not all of us as a group, mm -hmm. but as he asked his disciples one by one, as, yes. he, as, as Peter yes. gave him his individual answer, mm -hmm. as he looked each one in the eye, mm -hmm. he looks at us now, each and every one of us. Who do you? say that I am. If he is the Christ, if we would say with Peter, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, mm -hmm. who, if he is the Christ, we must be obedient servants without Amen. reservation. Thank you, Jesus. Who do you say that I am? Do you mm -hmm. say that I'm comforter, uh -huh. physician, healer, counselor? Yes. Who am I to you right now? Am I all those nice but unchallenging things? Yeah. Or am I the Lord, mm -hmm. the King of your life, mm -hmm. the Christ? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, that's been an absolutely wonderful yes. lesson. And I, and I praise the Lord for it. Yes. And back to you, Seamus. Back to you, Seamus. <laughs> Shauna. I'm sorry I acted like the king of everybody. Only Jesus can be the king of everybody. Oh, I know, Seamus. It reminds me of this song. All hail the power of Jesus' name that angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Okay, that's it for now. Remember, share this with your friends. Oh, I'm gonna share them with my friends. Right now! Shona, wait up! If you want us to publish five more questions for your family to discuss, add a question below. Just write five more questions, please. See you next time! Time kept moving forward I made the grades in school it was time to go and make it on my own Set off for the world With values carved in stone I never knew the emptiness of being all alone Though I'm many miles away From the home I hold so dear Daddy's words are there still ringing in my ear let us pray for the day of the day of Savior's birth. Our Father sent His only Son to live and die right here on earth. Let's send our praises up to heaven.